What's the most profitable niche on KDP? I get this question almost every day. Oh, Baru, can you please tell me your niche? Please tell me a profitable niche. I hate to break it to you. I'm so sorry to say this, but there's no such thing as a profitable niche. Now, wait, wait, don't, don't click off before I explain myself. Why do I say this? Why do I say that there's no such thing as a profitable niche? I'm going to show you why right now. So when I get people asking me about a profitable niche, the underlying question that they're saying is just tell me what to publish in and I will make money. But that's not actually how it works because they're thinking if I just know the niche, then any book I publish in this niche is going to make money. The people asking this question, that's what they assume. So if I tell them go publish a dog coloring book, they think, oh, let me just pull together a random dog coloring book. Let me go on AI, give me a bunch of dog coloring pages, slap a Canva cover on it, and then they think they're going to make millions of dollars. But that's not how it works. Unfortunately, I wish that's how it worked because the niche is only one part of the equation. So if I give you a profitable niche and then you mess up the rest of the puzzle piece of KDP, then you're going to fail. And the worst part is you're going to come and blame me for giving you a profitable niche that didn't work when in reality you didn't do the rest of it correctly i'm going to show you what that rest of it is now asking me what's the most profitable niche or for me to tell you a niche to publish in is literally the same thing as asking me what's the best place to build a house so you can rent it out and make a bunch of money i can come here and tell you i don't know anything about real estate by the way but i can come here and tell you oh yeah um san francisco is the best place it's the most profitable place and the rent is really high so people can pay you even more and then you can go ahead and make a house in san francisco and then no one wants to buy your house why because maybe you built it with super low quality material maybe you made the paint outside pink and no one wants a pink house in san francisco maybe there's roofing problems maybe the pipes burst every year maybe it's just a really bad house so no matter what location you build it in if you build a bad house in a good location you're still gonna fail it's still not gonna work because no one wants to buy a bad house no one wants to rent a bad apartment and the same applies for your niche i can give you the most profitable niche on amazon where a bunch of people are making tens of thousands of dollars every month from one book and you can still not make as much money as them because the second part of the equation is your book because you can't have a profitable niche but you can have a profitable book because why do we care about the niche so much what's so important about the niche the niche isn't going to make you money but the book is going to make you money so why is the niche so important well that's because the niche can give you data on where the book is going to actually make you money or not but it still depends on your book your book is way more important than the niche because there might be a super high supply in the niche where normally you're not supposed to publish in high supply niches but if you make an incredible book if you make a book that's more valuable than everyone else's book that is out there and it's very hard for you not to succeed even though it doesn't meet the niche criteria that we talk about so the question you should be asking is how do i make a profitable book and that's what i'm going to answer in this video right now so first of all we need to break down the niche why do we research a niche what's so important about the niche well first of all the niche gives us supply and demand why is this so important well supply and demand is as follows let's say me and you are in a race this is me and this is you now if we're in a race who's more likely to win it's probably a 50 50 chance it's either me or either you but what happens when we add three more people to the race if we're all the same speed then we all have a 20 percent chance of winning because 20 times 5 is 100 percent. so the more people we add to the race then the less the chances of us winning so if you find a niche with a low supply then you just have less people to compete with but demand is also important so what's demand demand is basically just saying are people actually buying the book or are people just making a bunch of books and no one's buying it now there's different ways to see demand but the easiest way is just to see if the book is selling or not and you can do that by looking at the abs number if you look at the absr number it tells you exactly how many copies they're selling a month and there's a calculator online you can go and search absr kindle calculator or something you'll find it and you can just put a book's absr number in that calculator and it will tell you exactly how many sales they're making so if there's a low supply and a bunch of them are selling then you have a niche with a good supply and a good demand but that's not just it one of the most important parts of a niche is your kyc what's your kyc this is know your customer you need to know who you're selling to because you can't sell something to someone that you don't know what they want that's the whole point of selling that's the whole point of creating a book the first step is understanding what the customer wants first and then you build it around the customer you build it for the customer so when you're making your book and you're thinking about your outline you're not thinking about what you're gonna like you're thinking about what the customer is gonna like when you're making your book cover you're thinking about what your customer is gonna like when you're making your a plus content you're using words that you think your customer is gonna like everything is about your customer because guess who has your money every single dollar that you want to make on kdp guess who has it not 
not you, your customer. And it's your responsibility to get that customer to give you the money so you can give them the book. And the best way to make sure that they do give you their money is by making a book that's more valuable than the price that you're selling it for. A simple example, if I'm making a book teaching you how to make 100K a year and I'm selling it for $20, is that worth it? Would you give $20 for a book that's teaching you how to make 100K a year? You probably are because 100K a year is way more valuable to you or the information on how to make it is way more valuable to you than your $20. And if that information is in a book, it doesn't matter to you because you want the value. You want to extract the value from the book. And $20 is an amazing price to learn how to make 100K a year. So it's kind of obvious that someone's going to give $20 for a book. Now, not all books are going to teach people how to make money, but the reason you're making a book is because you're solving a problem. So if you're selling a dog training book, someone is willing to give $20 for that book because training their dog is more important than their $20 that's in their pocket. Or a cookbook. Someone is willing to give $20, $25 for a cookbook because knowing the recipes and knowing how to cook is more important to them than the $20 in their pocket. So it's all about value. But you can't give value to someone that you don't know anything about them. So it's very important when you do your niche research to understand who you're selling to. If you understand who you're selling to, you understand what book you're going to make that will give them value. Now there's one final thing about the niche research that's extremely important to know and that's the gap. This is where I make a bunch of money. Now what's the gap? What's the gap in the niche? A gap in the niche is something that no one in the niche has done yet or no one has done it effectively. What do I mean by this? I was researching a um, no grid niche, something about surviving off grid survival skills or something like that. No grid living or something like that. And when I went inside all the books, there was like super high supply, like 15, 20, 25 different books selling. So there was demand and there was supply. There was a high supply, which is not usually not a niche that I would publish in, but the demand was there. If 20 books are selling, then it's going to be very easy for me to make a 21st one and sell, especially if I bridge the gap. But let me tell you what the gap is. So I went on all the books and every single book was around 150 pages to 250 pages. It was all black and white and they all had a yellow cover. Now, when I was doing the niche research, I concentrated on, on the know your customer part. So what did I do? I read the reviews because the reviews tell you exactly what the customer likes about the books that are already out there. And they tell you what they don't like. What they don't like is super important because if you know what they don't like, then you can see the gap in the niche. You can see what your competitors are missing out on. So when I went in the reviews, what do you think most reviews were talking about? Were they complaining that it was 150 to 250 pages? No, no one really complains about the pages of the books unless they're very, very small. Now 150 to 250 is a good size for a book. Do you think they were complaining that everything was black and white? Or do you think they were complaining that all the covers were yellow? Well, the covers, they don't really care about the covers because they're not paying for a nice cover. Some people pay just for the cover, cookbooks or things like that, coffee table books as well. But in this case, most of the customers were complaining that even though there was images in the books of the competitors, they were all black and white. No one had a colored interior. So guess what the gap in the market is? A colored interior. And do you know why no one had a colored interior? Because the profit margins of a colored interior book are smaller and no one wants to make a book with low profit margins. But the prices of the book are very high. So even if you do standard color, 150 pages, you can still make over $6 for every sale. So for me personally, I like to publish books that are $5 profit per sale or above. So this fits my criteria. I might not be making $10 a sale like everyone else, which is black and white. But as soon as I publish my book with a colored interior, because I fill the gap, it will be very hard for someone to pick the black and white book over the colored book because the colored book is more valuable. It's more enjoyable to read because the book is good, not the niche, the book. Now, this is how you find a good niche. But the question was, how do you find a profitable niche? And my answer is there's no such thing as a profitable niche, only profitable books. So how do you make a profitable book? Well, the first thing you need to do after you have done all your research and you know who your customer is, the supply and demand is good and you figured out the gap in the market, then you can build your book around the customer and around the gap. Now, the first thing you need to focus on is your interior. Now, your interior consists of the writing, which the ghostwriter is in charge of. But if you understand how to hire the correct ghostwriters that we talk about in the program, you're going to find very high quality ghostwriters. And you want high quality ghostwriters because you're trying to sell this book for years. You're trying to make a big income from this book. So if the contents of your book are written in a high quality fashion, you're going to get reviews and positive reviews. And these positive reviews are going to increase your ranking. And because of everything else as well, people are going to keep picking your book and your ranking is just going to keep increasing. Now, the second part of the interior of the book is the formatting. You must do the formatting good. One of the mistakes that I made when I was first publishing is I wrote the book myself because I was so broke, I couldn't hire a ghostwriter. So I made the book myself. I wrote everything. I published it. The cover was terrible. I couldn't afford a designer. I had to figure out how to design myself. And I let the book on Amazon run for like three months. And I was making a little bit of money, like $10 a month or something. I think on my third month, I made $30 a month. And I felt like I was a millionaire. But anyway, I was making a few sales. 
sales and then I finally had enough money to actually order my book to see it and I ordered the book and as soon as it came I opened the Amazon package I opened the book and the formatting inside was terrible the boxes of text were all all over the place some some text boxes were getting cut off the font was too big some pages had page numbers others didn't have page numbers it was all it was a mess and that's when I realized that formatting was a thing and I started studying formatting and now I understand how formatting works so you should definitely always format your book or pay a professional designer to format your book why is it so important because when someone reads your book you want it to be an enjoyable experience and the better the formatting the more enjoyable the experience of reading that book and the more enjoyable the experience the more likely they are to leave a review so the interior is quality but guess what no one's actually going to buy your book unless they click on it and in order for them to click on it you need to understand how to have a very effective cover now here's the thing please please if you're a professional publisher and you're trying to run a professional publishing business please don't just make a random cover on canva and slap it on amazon and hope to make sales i'm not dissing canva canva is good for some things but if you're really thinking about this business as a long-term thing that's going to bring you money you need to learn to use photoshop even if you're not going to design when you get the designer's files back they're going to give you a photoshop file no professional publisher is designing their book covers on canva now i'm not saying canva's bad but canva is very very limited if you compare photoshop to canva photoshop is a hundred times better to use and you can do things in photoshop that you can't do in canva now i know what you're saying but photoshop is hard canva is so easy i know now if you want to keep making covers on canva that's fine but if you are going to make covers on canva i would strongly suggest you study design because the better you understand design the better book covers that you can produce whether it's on canva or photoshop but personally i just use photoshop you can basically do absolutely anything you want so you have your interior which is going to give you reviews and then you have your cover which is going to give you clicks well you got the clicks but it's very important that you convert those clicks into sales which is why the next part of your book is your marketing and your a plus content because your a plus content is going to psychologically trigger them to buy your book because you're conveying value through the a plus content i show you in the program all the psychological triggers that you can use to get people to buy using your a plus content and if you implement that then that will increase your conversion rate and the higher your conversion rate well you know all the benefits of having a high conversion rate i talk about it in almost every video but here's the thing there's one final thing that you need to do with your book in order to make a bunch of money now we did the niche research and we know our customers and we know the gap so when we're creating the book guess what we need to implement we need to implement the gap we need to close the gap and how do we close the gap well in this case we want colored pictures so colored pictures is our what it's our usp our usp is our unique selling point now it's called unique selling point because either no one else in the niche is doing it or very 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 few people are doing it and not as effectively as they can so if you can do the same usp as someone else but more effectively that's still a usp you have the best usp because yours is more effective so if someone has a hundred recipes in their cookbook and you come and make 200 your usp is still the amount of recipes but you have more recipes so your book is more valuable which means people are more likely to buy which is why i like preaching about usp because your usp can close the gap in the niche that you found and that's how you find a profitable niche you need to find the niche with the correct supply and demand you need to understand your customers so you can build your book around your customer you can satisfy them and then you need to identify a gap in the niche when you identify a gap in the niche then you can fill in that gap and if there's a bunch of people that want this gap filled they're going to be willing to give you money for you to fill that gap in this case it's colored images now you can go do this yourself go on no grid search no grid survival or something like that and look at the books and see how many of them have colored interiors almost all of them have black and white i didn't see any with a colored interior i tried to find some obviously i didn't spend hours researching but just the first ones that pop up they were all black and white so instantly i knew if i made a colored one i instantly stand out from the niche and then that's a profitable niche if you do the book correctly so to answer the question it's not about your niche and it's not about your book it's about combining them both together it's about taking both of these puzzle pieces of kdp and doing them as effectively as possible so i hope that answers your question about finding a profitable niche and i hope this helps you change your mindset in finding a profitable niche to creating a profitable book in a profitable niche but anyway if you're struggling with something specific just leave a comment down below i'll try my best to make a video for you and yeah good luck with kdp